in. We have a problem, guys, and the problem is that we have a bunch of barbells on the floor. As you can see, we have fat bars, curl bars, tricep bars, weightlifting bars, powerlifting bars, and they're just like everywhere all around the gym. Literally buried in bars. Yeah, yeah, this is the bar graveyard. And so we decided we needed to build a barbell rack, and we're gonna do that for $50 or less. All right, so as always, Hunter has a problem, and I'll be the solution. So, what do we need to create a barbell rack? Well, let me tell you. First thing you need is material, and we're gonna use some good old two by eight. I mean, two by six by eight. I'm not a construction worker, but this is what you need. <laughs> All right. Next thing you need is a little jigsaw thingamaboo. DeWalt, we're, this is our sponsor. It's great. It's not actually our sponsor. We aren't sponsored. <laughs> Batteries! Ah! Drill. A measuring tape. The baby! Hunter, do you know what the most important in invention in human history was? Bread? No. <laughs> Writing utensils! Fair enough. Fair enough. What we're gonna do is readjust these holes because somebody else started this project yesterday, Hunter and they didn't do it right. So I'm here to fix it. So we're gonna take this, and one of the problems that I've been running into is that you can't go straight down into the hole to readjust it, because there's already a gap here, and when the, when the saw spins, it moves you all around the place, and makes things look ugly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come at it at an angle, like that. Get it going. And then as we go, we're gonna slowly rotate the drill up until it's flush with the lines that we traced. Woo! That is a nice hole. Another thing that you might need is a triangle or a square, whatever. You tell me what it is. Alright, then we're going to try to follow these lines as, as well as we can to make this thing look exactly like that. Okay, okay, and how did we draw the original lines? Do you remember how we did that? We've been working on this barbell rack for months. For literally months. <laughs> for literally months. It should take you about a day. <laughs> okay? Maybe three hours. Max, <laughs> maximum, okay? So when you're sawing into this with that circular saw, you want to make sure that they are spaced appropriately. So we measured all of these from the edge, and it's about three inches in on the farthest side in, and they are spaced from center to center about eight and a half inches. So it'll give us space to put like ten barbells on this rack. So we hope. You take your triangle or square. Who cares? Not me. Put it on here. Bring it down to the circle that we previously cut. Make it flush with the bottom of the circle right there. Then you're gonna take your pen and you're gonna mark right here at the bottom of this inner triangle, square, whatever. You know, I'm not good at geometry, but it looks like a triangle to me. And then I also marked at the top up here. And then once I came out, I took this from the bottom of this circle here and connected it to that point there. And from the top edge of this circle here to that point up there. Really, this isn't an exact an exact line. We're not going to get exactly perfect on every single one. So what you want to do is you want to create one that looks like a, it's a good angle, and then you're going to replicate that on the other side and replicate it all the way down by tracing it out. So one of the problems that you're going to run into as you're sawing is that if you zoom in over here, get close here, I'll pull the saw out. As you saw, sawdust covers the line, so then it's messing up your reference point and you're not able to continue. So one thing that you can do, a little, little carpenter's trip for you, is that uh, while you're mid-saw, you can blow from above and clear out the sawdust. By following that trick, you can make a nice perfect line without, without messing up.
Okay, so this is our fattest barbell that we have. Um, so it's thicker than all the other ones, so we're gonna have to make a cut that's just slightly thicker. Like it fits in barely, but uh, we're gonna have to do some special work for this one. It's a very girthy bar. <laughs> so we finished all of our primary cuts here, but because a uh, hunter has this axle bar, come, come over here with me, please. <laughs> As you can see, this bar is quite thick. No, not in that type of thick. But we're gonna go over here, and Hunter hath chosen that this cutout here should hold thine axle bar. So we're gonna make it a little bit bigger through some artistic innovation here. And we're kind of just gonna give it our best shot and then see if that works out well. And if it fits, then we'll adjust the other one. Like so, something like that should work. Alrighty, let's get to sawing. Alright, so, I'm recording. As you can see, we've got all of our cuts made here. They line up pretty well, but not, nothing's exactly perfect when you're working with a skill saw. So now we go to the final, well not the final part, but the final... We're gonna sand it. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Wait, wait, get a video. Oh. You gotta raise them up. Work essential uh, trip. Yeah. Business expenses. I mean, <laughs> yeah. this is where we're <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. Um, okay, so as you can see, we've completed most of all of our cuts and they line up pretty well, but when you're working with a skill saw, nothing's exact. So I'm gonna go over all of my cuts with some sandpaper. And we've got 220 grain and 120 grain. When it comes to sandpaper, the lower means the lower the number mean, uh, equates to the higher the grain and the more coarse it is. So screw this. We're just gonna use this one. All right, and we're gonna sand all these edges so that the bars move slip, uh, so, that, so that the bars will slide nicely into the slots. <laughs> All right guys, so Ethan is done with all the cuts and all the sanding. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stain the rack to make it the same color as the platforms. To stain it, we have this wood finish, kind of a darker color. Um, what is it called? It's called English Chestnut. It's really awesome, we like it for the platforms and it goes well with gold and uh, we're trying to get more gold in the gym all the time. So one way that you can do this is you can fold your stain application pad, uh, which by the way, you can get these at Lowe's for like five bucks, but you can fold it, then fold it again, and dip the middle of it in. Okay, kind of dab it a few times, and then that's super thick, dude. But basically, we're just gonna go all the way down. And it's just gonna give it a really cool, rich color and match the rest of the stuff in the gym. So we'll do one coat on this side. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll do the other side. So we got the wood done, cut, stained. Next step is getting the hardware. We went to Lowe's. Uh, we got some screws that are gonna screw into the L brackets that we bought. Guys, I have painted all these brackets and now Ethan is telling me that these brackets are, are bullshit and that they're not even worth. It's trash. Okay, <laughs> and, and explain your reasoning, Ethan. Well, because your studs are spaced like so, as they are in most structures. And your brackets are not long enough to reach to the, from stud to stud. So, if we place, oh, 
said barbell 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 rack on yes, the wall. The barbell rack. The barbell rack. I put the bracket on there. By the way, these are for shelves. I don't I don't know who sent him to Lowe's. You the dude at Lowe's literally, I said L brackets, which is what he told me to get, and the dude at Lowe's said these are the L brackets that we have. Okay, and then I bought them. Okay, but apparently it's fucking rocket science, and these brackets aren't gonna work. Because studs run like this, and they're about two inches wide. So we'll only be able to use one screw hole. Even if we drilled other holes in this, it would still look ridiculous, and it wouldn't function very well. So we're going back to Lowe's. What's up, world? We're at Lowe's Hardware Store! <laughs> we're shopping for outbreakers! <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but for real, where, where are these brackets? Kyle's the only one wearing a mask. Protect yourself. <laughs> Kyle's smart. <laughs> Fucking 30. Notice how this is small, and what you had was ginormous. Well, yeah, it's like me and you in other areas. No, no, <laughs> no. It's the exact opposite of other areas. I whatever. Know, I don't know. You're talking about nipples. <laughs> Follow us at Naked Carpentry Only Fans. <laughs> oh my god. But seriously, would you? Because we've been considering it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you would follow us. Just send us a message. Just send us an email. Okay, Ethan, what's your email? Um, nakedcarpenter at hotmail.com. Okay, we'll make that email. <laughs> email that email. Comment if we should start Naked uh, Carpentry. You know that email's already taken. Probably. <laughs> 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 We'll buy it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll contact that guy and get him to join us. <laughs> <laughs> Start a network of naked carpenters. We could also just bring the freaking flag up some. Yeah, we could, we could. Dude, this thing is gonna, if you don't put them on the inside, then you're gonna have to be terrifying. I'm out. <laughs> you really think that we're gonna get electrocuted? I'm Dude, not. should we take this out quick? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Because it's just mudded. This could just be the edge of sheetrock that they just mudded super shitty. That, the other one's not even in the fucking stud. He's screwed. Daddy's turn. <laughs> I'm daddy, by the way. It's my what turn. the fuck? Next. Dude, what is the other one, the other one, Ethan. I can't get the other one. I think the other one isn't a stud. What this isn't in the stud at all. I know, Ethan. That's what I said. All right, Ethan, just try that other one. Oh my gosh. For goodness gracious. Can we use shorter screws? We can use shorter screws as long as they're like half the length of this. So you're saying that this screw is good? Alrighty, guys. We are now over the clusterfuck of putting the barbell rack into the wall and fastening it. We have the L brackets, and uh, we found all the correct hardware. Something that happened is a lot of these screws, kind of the paint got stripped off when we put them in. So today I got a gold marker, uh, a little paint pen, and I just painted them, and they match pretty well. It's really secure in the wall, it's not gonna fall over. And the last thing we're gonna do, which will not be in this video, is we'll add a cross member here so that I can put my collars on it. And then we're gonna add an LED strip right here to the side so we can light it up. But this is it guys. Um, if you do end up building one at home, I'm very sorry that this is the video you used. Okay guys, if you like that video, like that video. And also comment and subscribe. Yeah. Boom. If you don't like the video, give it a thumbs up anyway, okay? Yeah, if we get any dislikes, we will find you and we will kill you. We are. So I would just be like normal like this. <laughs> <laughs> None of this better come up when I'm running for governor. <laughs> All right. What I did, come a little higher angle. Let's get in the B-roll. 
Oh my god. <laughs> this is gonna be the best YouTube video of all time. We're gonna get a million views. <laughs>